Hi everyone, it's Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks. And today we are making the Embrace Shawl. It's a shawl worn around the shoulders with pockets and they allow you to pull the shawl around your body making it feel like an embrace. I have added the pockets in the same design as the body of the shawl so they're a little bit disguised. It's the perfect stash buster as I used yarn from my stash and I held various strands together and in different colors. But you can also use just the one color and one strand if you want to. It is a really, really lovely shawl. I'm really liking it. It's really warm and the pockets just make it so very nice to hug it round your body, making it feel like an embrace. It comes down quite low on the back and it provides warmth on your back and your shoulders so who wouldn't want to wear it when you're crocheting in the sofa or sitting in bed reading or crocheting or when you quickly pop out to collect the mail from the letterbox. There are holes in the pockets so you might want to line them but they're fine for your hands and for your phone or your tissue for instance. I think it's a lovely shawl which is quite practical too. So I hope you are interested in making this and I have written the pattern for this shawl so anyone can make it. I am giving you instructions to make it whichever size you are and whatever yarn you are using. I have a written pattern available on Ravelry with all the measurements in inches too. And I have included lots more pictures as well. It's a great way for you to support me and you can find the link to my Ravelry shop down below in the description box. Let's get started with the tutorial. I looked in my stash and I found some Saver Ice Yarn in grey. Now this is an Aran for a 5mm hook and I also found some Saver 100 and some Starcraft Special DK for a 4mm hook. So I am going to hold two strands together of Aran for the border. For the body of the shawl I am going to combine the Aran with one strand of proper purple Starcraft DK. So when you're combining strands you have to decide which hook is going to be best for which um, flowiness of the fabric you want to achieve. So I am going to use a 6 because I think that's the one that will give me the uh, thickness and the flowiness of the fabric that I want. Before you start roll off an amount for your second border's second strand. So we are doing the border and the body in one go in this shawl so you will need this yarn at the end of your rows. To find out how long you are going to make your shawl, you are going to need to measure your fingertip to fingertip measurement. I am showing you here how to do it. You could use a measuring tape or another shawl you have. Now mine ended up being 173 centimeters. Now there are two ways of getting started. Either you do a foundation double crochet row, which I will explain here, or I will explain in a moment how to do your starting row with a chain and coming back with double crochets. We are going to get started with a slip knot and we are holding two strands together. Now we are going to do two chains, one and two. This is, so to speak, our turning chain. Now I am going to do my double crochet, but of course there's nothing here to do it in, so we have to make that first. So I've yarned over ready for my double crochet, but we are going to go into the first chain here, pick up these two, it's not so easy to start with, but it'll get easier, there we go, yarn over and pull up a loop. Now you yarn over again and you do your chain here. Okay, so now we've made the chain. Now we concentrate again on doing our double crochet. So you yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Same thing again, yarn over for the double crochet. 
we have to make the chain first. So this time you go back to that chain that you did just now. Again, it's a little bit fiddly to start with, but it will get better. I can see that little loop. There we go. Okay. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through the loop on your hook. So you've done the chain. Keep your eye on this bit here because that's the one that you're going to be using in a moment. Okay. Now do your double crochet. Pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over for the double crochet. Go into that chain. See, it's getting easier, she says. <laughs> pull up a loop. Do your chain. Now do your double crochet. And this is how you're going to continue until you have your fingertip to fingertip measurement and you have a multiple of three stitches because that is what we need for the stitch count. So here I am going to explain how to do the method where we do the chain and the double crochet separately. We are starting with a slip knot and then we are going to chain holding your two strands of yarn together and treating them as one to a length of 25 to 30 centimeters less than your initial fingertip to fingertip measurement. You see it will expand once we put our double crochets on. So here I have a chain which measures 143 centimeters and in fact I have 170 chains. I am now going to chain two, one and two. I am trying to keep hold of my last stitch. This is going to be my first double crochet coming out of that that very last stitch. So this counts as your first double crochet. Then you yarn over and in the fourth chain from your hook, one, two, three, four, you are going to put a double crochet. Remembering to make sure you pick up the correct amount of strands, of course, because you are holding two strands together. Okay, so this is double crochet one and double crochet two. Now you're going to go all along your chain and you have to keep an eye on it because it is going to stretch out to that initial measurement you made, right? So you've reduced your measurement, now it should stretch out again to that initial measurement. So, good luck with that. <laughs> and let's get going. I am going to sort of yarn over, insert into that V there, picking up the one strand, but of course it's made up of two, leaving the other two behind and I am going to pull up a loop, yarn over again, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so I use American terminology and I am going to be doing this stitch carefully <laughs> all along my chain. I will see you at the end of the rows. I kept doing my double crochets and counting, of course, and measuring. And now here I have achieved my fingertip to fingertip measurement. OK, so I now have 173 centimeters of chain with double crochet. But of course, here I have leftover chains which I was going to have because there is no way of knowing how much your chain is going to expand with the yarn that you are using and of course with your tension. So I am now carefully undoing these stitches here because I have indeed also counted my stitches and I have with my what I now have 165 stitches I now have a multiple of three as well so making sure yes that you have your me measurement you also have to make sure that you have a multiple of three so then it's better to go a couple of stitches less than more okay 
because there's always stretch involved. And so I've undone these last few stitches here. Now I'm just pulling this closed and that's fine. Nobody's going to know that we did that. Okay, so now we are going to do another two rows of double crochet because that's our border. Okay, so you are going to get started. Why is my hook turned round? Okay, so to get started on our second row, we are going to chain two. Then you turn your work. Your chain is going to count as your first stitch and then you are going to yarn over, not into that first V because obviously that's where the chain is coming out of, into that second V and you are going to do double crochets once again all along the line. Your work should not expand too much anymore now but after these three rows, you know, sort of when you finished your second row from here you are going to measure again just to make sure okay so i will see you now when you have three rows of double crochet so one two and three okay and then we can start the body of the shawl okay so i have done my three rows of double crochet using my two strands and my work is still fingertip to fingertip measurement okay so now we are going to get started on the body of the shawl. So what we are going to do, in fact, is do border on each row when we start and then we do the middle of the shawl and then towards the end we are going to do border on each row at the end of the row again. Okay, so to get started you are going to chain two, turn, this is your first double crochet. Now you're going to do another five double crochets. Whatever you do here, you need to make sure that you do a multiple of three, okay? Because that's what we are working with here. So let's have a look. Two, four, and there we go. This is the sixth one, right? Now we are going to leave one strand behind use one strand of our grey and add my proper purple strand. Now you are going to continue crocheting with these two strands, okay? I am also going to change the stitch. So we are going to do V stitches. So you're going to skip one stitch in the second one you are going to do a double crochet, a chain and a double crochet. There we go. Okay, so that's our first stitch. Now, when you've done this here, I am going to just tie this. There we go. Just a, a light knot, just to make sure that it's not going to move. Okay. And of course we are going to leave this strand on here because we are going to reuse it when we come back here to do the border. So now we are going to do V stitches all along here. So from now on you're going to skip two, yarn over into the third and do your V stitch which is one double crochet, one chain and one double crochet. Okay. You keep doing that until you reach the last six double crochets of your line. So for me, the amount of V stitches that I have to do here is 51. So I've taken my stitch count 165. I've taken away six and another six for the border on the other side. Then I've divided that by three and that made gave me 51 V stitches. Okay, so now I am going to do this one until I, hang on, where's the end? Where is it? Ah, here. <laughs> until I reach the end here. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So you might as well put a stitch marker in there. Because that is where I'm going to meet you. 
okay so I've got six stitches left here here I'm going to just keep on doing my V stitch repeat and I will see you at the end of the row okay so I've made it to the end of my row I have one stitch left here which is fine and then I've got my six stitches to do for my border so now we are going to leave the purple one behind we are going to take the grey one and this is of course where this small ball of grey comes in because this is where we are going to start using that one again so hold it together with the other grey like so so past sort of where that purple lies hold it like that and then yarn over and into that sixth stitch you are going to start doing double crochets there we go and of course you are going to do six of them so don't forget to do one in that turning chain because of course ah oh, yeah I lost one strand there because of course that turning chain counts as a stitch okay that's what we do okay so there we are so that's that and of course now here I have this stitch this sort of yarn here I'm going to tie a knot with that new one around it just so it's attached okay but don't cut it off because when we get back here we are going to take up this purple again okay so now we are working with your two strands of grey we are going to turn one two turn and it's best if you do it sort of on a table to leave the balls where they are so you don't sort of get too muddled up here and that turning chain counts as your first double crochet so do another five double crochets okay with your two strands of grey there we go now we are going to make sure you leave this one behind okay so don't take that one with you that stays here on this side for doing that border okay so make sure you're back to using your yarn that comes off your ball together with the purple and yes I mean you're going to see a little maybe a little line there I don't know but I don't think it will be all that obvious once you've you know you've done it all so we are going to yarn over the two strands and this time there's no need to count anymore because we are going to be doing the v-stitches into the chain spaces so let's do that and let me show you what it would look like look so there's a little line there for that purple I don't think that will uh, be all that obvious once the shawl is finished so you do your v-stitch double crochet chain one double crochet into the chain spaces of the v-stitches of the row below and this is how you are going to continue doing your rows so now when you come to the end here there is that strand here for you to take up with the two strands of grey just like we did earlier here then you come back with the two strands of grey and you pick up which will be the purple that will be left behind here because you've arrived here before you started your side here again you'll be able to pick up that purple just like we did here and continue on doing your purple V stitches so you are now going to do this same thing for 18 rows so make sure you have 18 V stitch rows before you actually come back to me and you start the border now if you have more yarn and if you want your shawl wider then of course you can do more rows 
I have now done my 18 v-stitch rows. I continued with doing my border on the right hand side and on the left hand side with two strands of grey and each time in the middle I did one strand of grey and one strand of proper purple. This one is nearly finished so I'm just going to leave that as it is, that's fine. Um, here I've cut off my purple there it is, there it is, okay, so that's ready to be sewn in. And now I am going to here, of course, I've done my six stitches for my border, but of course, now I am going to just continue doing double crochets all over my top here, because we are making the end border again. So let me just get this going. So you've done your um, six stitches for your double crochets at the beginning. You've got your two strands and you're just going to keep them, okay? And this time you are going to put one double crochet on top of that first double crochet of the V-stitch, then one double crochet into the chain space and another double crochet on top of that second double crochet from the V-stitch. Again, double crochet in the double crochet, double crochet around the chain space, double crochet in the double crochet <laughs> and this is how you continue, okay? And now you are going to be doing another, after this one, another two rows. So in total we're doing three rows of double crochets. I have now finished the body of my shawl. So I did my last three rows of double crochets and I have sewn in the ends everywhere. I have also made one pocket already uh, so I could show you what it looks like. So I have incorporated the pocket into the body of the scarf here. So you can't really see that there's a pocket there. Can you see that? <laughs> so we've made the same sort of fabric as we have used in the middle of the scarf and then I have sewn it on and sort of it looks like a hidden pocket. Well, it does to me anyway. So let me show you how to go about to make the pocket. Let me put this to the side. So I have now also started another ball of this saver because, yeah, those two big balls had run out. <laughs> right, so we are using two strands of yarn together again. You are going to do a slip knot and you are going to chain 18 plus 2 plus 2. So 18 is for the stitches, for the V stitches. We are going to do... Um, six V stitches. Then we need a double crochet on each end to make our pocket straight and then of course we need our turning chain. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen for the stitches, one each for the side and then this here is going to be my last stitch so I'm keeping my fingers on that doing two turning chains and of course that turning chain is now already counting as our first double crochet of the round <laughs> one chain skipped into the next chain we are going to do a V stitch double crochet chain one and double crochet into that same stitch into that same chain better. Okay, so there we go. So we have our straight edge and we have our V. Now we're going to skip two and we are going to go and do a V stitch in the third chain. And you will continue like this to the end of your row and you will have made, like I said, six V stitches because six times three is 18. Just checking, making sure that you're picking up the right amount here. There we go. Now we are going to do 
uh, 10 rows of V stitches. So now that we have um, done our initial row here, we are now going to sort of um, do the next rows. It will be easier, of course, because we are going to be doing them in the chain spaces of the V stitches of the row below. But we are nearly there, look. Okay, so now I have two stitches left, that's correct, because that one is the one for the repeat of the V-stitch, and this one here is our double crochet for creating a, a straight side. There we go. Okay, so this is the start of our pocket. We are going to do two chains for a turning chain. Of course, that's going to be our side double crochet. And then, like I said, from now on, we are going to be doing the V-stitch into the chain space of the V-stitch below. And I'm going to see you now when you have done your 10 rows and you are ready to sew it on your scarf. It's as easy as that. I will see you in a moment. Okay, so I have finished my little square. 18 stitches wide, 10 rows high. And it's about 16 centimetres wide by, eight, by 17 centimetres high. And it is going to fit really nicely onto our scarf. We have here one, two, three, four rows. Then I sort of put that at the same level there. Then you'll have 10 rows and then here, one, two, three, four, you'll have another four rows left. Okay, so you know it's sort of in the middle. I have here, this is where I had my beginning end, so I've sewn those in. But I have here my ends where I just stopped crocheting, right? So this is my loop. I am now going to leave this really long, not too long. Sort of like that, yeah. Because that's what I'm going to use to sew in my pocket. Or sew my pocket onto my shawl. So I'm going to pull this out. There we go. Right. And now I am going to use my needle, which I had ready, but of course then you can't find it anymore. And I'm going to put in both the yarns into my needle there we go and i am going to sew on the pocket i think i need to make it easy i need to just turn this round <laughs> okay and all i'm doing really is just sort of you know picking up um stitches in the shawl and then coming back into the V's on the side there, see? And this is how I'm going to go around the three sides of my pocket. Of course, you leave this side open. And as you can see, the V's are like this here and the V's are like that there. So you need to make sure that that is sort of the case as well. But yeah, this is the fun part, because of course, in a moment, I'll be able to wear this. <laughs> and I have been trying it on, of course, and it's really lovely and warm over the shoulders. Oh, it's really nice. So yeah, I'm looking forward to wearing this. So I will leave you to it here, and I am going to continue sewing. I'm going to just add a few more um, sort of some footage of me wearing my shawl at the end of this video here so you can just have a look and see what it's like and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed creating this scarf as well. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!
Don't forget to like and share this video. Make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss any of my uploads. Also, make sure you're a member of our Facebook group. Here are some suggested videos for you. I hope you enjoy watching them. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!